If you clicked on this video, you're either one of two things. An NBA fan that barely watches football or an NFL fan that barely watches basketball. Or you're both, or you know, some kind of, some kind of combination of that. It doesn't really matter. What does matter is that you clicked on this video, meaning that you're curious. And to be honest with you, I'm pretty curious as well. The NBA and NFL by definition are two complete and utter parallels. I mean, one has a roster size of 10 to 15, whereas the other has a roster size of 53. More often than not, you simply cannot make comparisons. But it's those times when you can make comparisons, whether it's through the amount of championships or the amount of relative individual dominance or anything like that, that makes comparisons like these so intriguing. What's up, y'all? I'm Kipcom at 11 and let's indulge. So quickly, for those uninitiated, the Super Bowl is a football contest between two of the best football teams in the NFL. One in the Eastern Conference, known as the AFC, and the other in the Western Conference, known as the NFC. Of the two teams, one gets a W and the other gets a L and blah blah blah, enough of that, y'all good. The Kansas City Chiefs and Tampa Bay Buccaneers, commandeered by Timothy Brady, aka GOAT, competed off in a wrestling I'm, I'm, I mean football game against Patrick- no, you know, no, 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 man, that was straight on the salt, y'all know that they could have- years in prison that was bull man that was they no nah, that was assault that was assault that was assault so the tampa bay buccaneers faced off in a football game against patrick mahomes hey listen and when i say patrick mahomes i mean patrick mahomes i mean him him alone but anyway sorry for the bias but yeah there were a lot of parallels in super bowl 55 that could actually be found with the nba in fact, it's actually strikingly similar to another matchup that we've seen in the nba in just the past recent years welcome to end basketball terms. Let's talk about player comps first. So in the NBA, there's not really many positions that you can directly correlate with the NFL. For most positions, you really can't compare the amount of impact that one player has on the direction of a team. A lot of that has to do with a 10-man roster in the NBA versus a 22 in the NFL. It's just not a direct correlation, unless you are playing a skilled position. And when I say skilled position, I'm, I mean just quarterback. I mean, I mean. There's a reason that they win all the MVPs. However, if I had to put definitions on the supposed power players of the Super Bowl, I'm gonna give it to you straight. I think that Rob Gronkowski is basically Dennis Rodman on offense. And I don't even think that does him justice, to be honest with you. And for Antonio Brown, man, shoot. He's Dennis Rodman if everyone hated his guts. <laughs> and as for the other players, well, I simply don't know enough about them to, to make a comparison. So y'all let me down in the comments, fill me in real quick. Make sure you like the video while you're down there too. But I do, however, know enough about the Kansas City Chiefs. Tyree kills like Kyrie Irving with the personality of an older Anthony Edwards. Amazingly talented, but you know, since he's a wide receiver, he needs someone else to help him win. And of course, Anthony Edwards, cause that's Anthony Edwards. That's a Georgia boy, heard you. I'm, I'm a land nigga. Look at y'all, I already told you from screen, you feel me? Oh, goddamn ugly little boy. Excuse me? And Travis Kelsey is a lot like Klay Thompson, if he had top five finishing and dribbling skills in the NBA. That's the best way I could put it. No more discussion, except in the comments below. Go. But anyways, enough chit chat. Let's get to the real storylines of Super Bowl 55 and talk about four of the most important players of our generation. Eko. <laughs> Let's start from the very top. Patrick Mahomes is so much like the 2016 Stephen Curry that it's almost scary. Of course, they were both players that took the league by storm just a few years prior. Steph Curry and the Warriors coming on the scene for 67 wins and an NBA championship, and the Kansas City Chiefs exploding out of the gate with a 23-year-old quarterback to make it all the way to the AFC Championship just to be one offside play away from the Super Bowl. And then, of course, the year after that, they went on to beat the 49ers and the Texans and all those other teams in amazing comebacks in order to become the NFL's best team. The 2021 Patrick Mahomes and 2016 Steph Curry are just almost perfect parallels. For one, they're light skin. They both got like the exact same shade of light skin. And I think they got the same eyes too, if I'm not mistaken. And the same hair color too. They, they different. But they also revolutionized stereotypes. Patrick Mahomes became a scrambler, a unique passer, someone who was willing to throw the ball deep down to receivers and basically becoming the perfect offensive force because of all of his versatility. Whereas Stephen Curry went ahead and broke the stigma of twos being better than threes and truly pushed the NBA towards the revolution 
of the three-pointer. It's what allowed the Rockets to take some 43s in a game and consider it average. And as for Patrick Mahomes, well, there's a reason that Lamar Jackson won the MVP just three years after Matt Ryan. And as an extension of their revolutionary play, they both were the engines of super exciting offenses. While the Warriors on defense were far better than the Chiefs are today, Steph Curry and Patrick Mahomes have both captained historical offenses, and they've done so in a galvanizing, exciting way. Whether it was the Warriors' explosive third quarters or the Kansas City Chiefs' amazing fourth quarter comebacks, there was always a reason to be excited for them. And there was also a reason to hate them. Actually, no, there wasn't. There was no reason to actually hate them at all. Another thing that's so amazing to me about Steph and, and Patrick is that they're the cleanest, classiest media personalities that you'll ever find. You'd never find a tattoo on their body, and let alone them saying a cuss word on camera or anything like that. They get the job done, they do all the right things, and then after that, you don't see them. However, despite nothing being abrasive whatsoever about the players themselves, people took it upon themselves and take it upon themselves now to hate the 2016 Warriors and 2021 Kansas City Chiefs. I I'm not gonna lie, I hated the Warriors too, and like, <laughs> like, I'm reformed now, I understand that there was no reason, but back then, it was just something about the fans. Something about the fans. I don't know if Kansas City fans are like that. You know, I, I live here. I don't think that we're like that, but hey, y'all let me know. I don't know. And because probably, actually probably because the media hypes them up too much. That's probably another thing. But also the crazy thing about that is that they weren't expected to be great. They're expected to be good, but not who they were today. Patrick Mahomes was drafted 10th in the 2017 NFL Draft under quarterbacks Mitch Trubisky and Deshaun Watson, both of whom, you know, have, have had their relative uh, levels of success but none even coming close to Patrick Mahomes. Whereas Steph Curry, he was drafted seventh in the 2009 NBA draft under point guards like Johnny Flynn and Ricky Rubio. And just like Mahomes, no other player in that draft comes even close to his level of greatness, except for maybe James Harden. That's actually really crazy. Now, as for the actual time-specific comparisons, there's a lot of those as well. In 2016, they were both coming off a title run and they were both easy favorites. Given that the Warriors that year had won 73 games and the Kansas City Chiefs were 14 and one when Mahomes was playing and was on some 20 something game win streak disregarding one game against the Las Vegas Raiders. And when they make it to the championship series, they are against the most accomplished player in the sport. Tom Brady clearly for 2021 and LeBron James for 2016. And for both Curry and Mahomes, there were injuries that hamstrung both of the teams. Not only injuries to other players, but also injuries to themselves. Mahomes played with a turf toe that requires months of rehab, whereas Curry was playing with an ankle injury that bugged him for the entire playoffs. And in addition to that, there were the injuries to the other players. Draymond Green, of course, uh, let's call it like a retroactive kick to the nuts. <laughs> That's what we're gonna call it. And for Andrew Bogut, something happened to his leg in game five that didn't give them much rebounding power when they really needed it. And as for Patrick Mahomes, 60% of his offensive line was missing. That's all we gotta say there. And in the end, of course, they both lost. Now, of course, this is not a perfect one-to-one -one comparison. Mahomes definitely did not have an average, quote-unquote, average period like Curry did. In his first season in the NFL, he was already a top three MVP candidate, whereas Curry had to take two or three years to get to that level. Another thing is that Curry did already have two MVPs. One was undisputed and the other was a little wishy-washy, but he had two MVPs regardless. And as for the championships themselves, Mahomes played amazing throughout all of those different circumstances, whereas Curry could really not say the same for himself. Honestly, in my opinion, Patrick Mahomes was the best player in Super Bowl 55. A lot of people won't agree with that, but that's my own personal opinion. And the final, perhaps most important difference between these two guys is that Mahomes' all-time potential is just way higher than Curry's. And that's something that's crazy to actually say, but it's true. Curry is going to be a top 10 NBA player by the time he retires, without a doubt. But because of his physical limitations, him not being 6'6 and above, and him not being over 200 pounds, it puts a cap on how well he's able to dominate. Whereas Patrick Mahomes doesn't have any of those physical barriers, and has already performed better than Curry has in 2016, which is something also stupid crazy to say. It's gotten to the point right now, of course, that it's his third full year in the league, and he's already being groomed to be the greatest player of all time. That's crazy. Now this comparison isn't nearly as acute as it was with Mahomes and Curry, 
but it's still pretty darn accurate. But it's the year that might surprise you the most. I think that Tom Brady in 2021 most resembles the LeBron James of 2016. Now, of course, let me explain myself. In just the general scheme of things, of course, they are both hated for a majority of their career, both for their successes and for their failures and for their scandals. LeBron James, of course, ever since he was drafted out of Akron, Ohio, has been the target for many, many people. And the same thing for Tom Brady as soon as he won his first Super Bowl with the Patriots. Or even before that, honestly, I don't know. I'm not, I'm, I'm not old enough to know that. But speaking of age, they're also the oldest superstars in their respective game. Tom Brady, as has been notoriously documented, is 43 years of age, whereas LeBron James is 36. To put that into perspective, for a 20-year NBA career, LeBron James is three seasons away from retirement and is still leading MVP voting. Whereas Tom Brady, of course, 43 years of age, every quarterback over the age of 40 is already retired or is not leading a team to the Super Bowl. And as an extension of them being the oldest superstar in the sport, they're also the most notorious. But of course, even the bad popularity is still popularity. And of course, they've both been in the GOAT conversation for a very, very long time now. Now, if it were just that, it would definitely be a stretch to say that Tom Brady is more like LeBron, particularly when you've got Michael Jordan and Bill Russell still out there. But listen to this. 2021 Tom Brady and 2016 LeBron James both left a successful franchise in order to make something new for themselves, to prove something. For Tom Brady, that was leaving the Bill Belichick system in New England and winning on his own terms. For LeBron James, it was going back to his home state of Ohio and bringing a championship to a city that had been in a drought for 50 plus years. But not only that, they were able to handpick their crewmates that they wanted to take along with them. LeBron James was able to get Tristan Thompson $84 million. He was able to sign J.R. Smith and Iman Shumpert, and was also able to trade for Kevin Love. And while we all talk about the GM, we gotta start thinking about Tom the Executive. The two players that scored touchdowns for the Buccaneers in Super Bowl 55 were handpicked by Brady, personally reached out to by Brady to join the Buccaneers during the season. Of course, Rob Gronkowski and Antonio Brown. That's goat talk right there. They were also both heavily, heavily doubted coming in. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers started off going 7-6 and six in a 16-game season, and LeBron James and the Cavaliers were of course down 3-1 to one against the Golden State Warriors. And they both met and exceeded the odds that were placed upon them, and accomplished something historical. And finally, that championship ring they got further solidified their status as the greatest player of all time. Now as I say that, Tom Brady was already established as the GOAT, but for many people, that third ring that LeBron James got made him the greatest player of all time. Hey, by the way, I'm just saying what people say, don't know. <laughs> don't hold me against that, all right? Now, there were a few stretches here and there. The number one being, as I said before, Tom is just simply a better winner than LeBron. When you have seven rings in 10 Super Bowls, you can't really compare that to his three and three record at the time and his current four and six record. Of course, that all has to do with the team system and the situations that LeBron was in versus to Tom, but that's still a huge point of contention. And also LeBron had already been in contention with the Warriors the previous year. And of course the year after and the year after and probably the year after, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Brady's probably not going to make it back to the Super Bowl in my opinion, and this is the first time he faced off against the Kansas City Chiefs, and it probably will be the last. There was also no Kyrie Irving in this performance, someone who was almost if not just as stellar as the main player, unless you're counting the Buccaneers defense or Leonard Fournette. But speaking of level of play and where I feel like this comparison really would fall down is that Tom Brady did not have to play spectacularly in order to win his championship. Whereas LeBron James, of course, had to put on an historic performance, put the team on his back and then some in order to squeak out in victory, Tom Brady just had to do what he'd always done. The defense of both the Buccaneers and the Chiefs did the rest. The best way I think you could put it is that Tom Brady was carried by the Buccaneers, whereas the Cavaliers were carried by LeBron. So if you've got the 2016 Steph Curry versus the 2016 LeBron James in the championship game, wouldn't that just be the 2016 finals? While of course it isn't perfect, look at it like this. The superstar young player with his revolutionary play and spectacular offense is looking to repeat as a champion versus a newly constructed team around the greatest player in the game. It was a valiant battle, but the spectacular young player historically underperformed. But it wasn't entirely his fault. Due to absences in some of the team's crucial players, there were chinks in the young superstar's armor that the other team could exploit. The greatest player in the game did what he had to do, and after winning, 
became even higher up on the greatest of all time list. While the young superstar, the wonder kid, with all the momentum in the world, is impossibly beaten, he professionally licks his wounds and tends to his injuries and gets ready to come back next year. I'm just hoping that means we don't get KD, bro. I'm not looking for that drama. some water. Hey, hey, that doesn't count. That doesn't count.